we are going to derive the third equation of motion. We've already established the first and the second equation of motion. We shall use the knowledge of this first and second equation of motion to derive the third equation of motion. Here on the board, I have the first and the second equation of motion. So, how do we proceed to get the third equation of motion from these two equations? It's a simple one. Let us see how we go about that. We're going to start by using the first equation of motion, which is equation 1 here. I shall square both sides of the equation, the left and the right hand side. So let me write that square, square both sides of equation 1, of equation 1. So in squaring both sides of equation 1, this is what I do, watch. It's going to be v squared equal to, pick these two terms together, which is u plus at, and then square it outside. This is how we square both sides. Please, I want to tell you this clearly. Don't go do this. When you hear square both sides, you now go and do v squared equal to u squared plus a squared times t squared. This is very wrong. And that is why the GMAT 41 will always continue to advise any science student, whatever the course you want to study in a higher institution, to make sure you take mathematics seriously. Please, don't be among those who say, no, I'm going for medical field. I am not going for engineering. I'm not studying pure mathematics, so I don't need math. Please, dear students, take note. In higher institution, as long as you're a science student, you've got no choice. You must be trying in mathematics. For those of you preparing for JAN, that is University and Tertiary Matriculation Examination, your physics, your chemistry, calculations you do there are, are done using the knowledge of mathematics. So please, even if anyone tells you, ah, that don't worry, you're going for medical field, eh? you're an art student, forget about that, I don't be bothered about that, please tell the person that the GMAS 41 said what? No. You have to work on maths. Take it very seriously, please. It's going to help you a lot. So, this is not correct. Let us see how we expand this. I've shown you, you need to put all the right hand side in bracket and then you square it, being that you have plus here. So, this is going to give us v squared. I'm expanding now. I'm going to expand the right hand side. v squared equal to, in expanding the right hand side, what will I do? I'm sorry, I'm going to use the knowledge of binomial expansion in mathematics. I'm going to use the knowledge of binomial expansion. It's going to be u squared u squared, then uh, u times a times t times 2. u times a times t times 2 will give us plus 2 uat, and then plus this term, at squared, which will give us a squared t squared. What I did here, don't try it for power 3 and other powers. Don't do that. It only works for power 2. However, there is a better way of solving this, even without using what we call combination or Pascal's triangle. On the binomial theorem in mathematics, I'm going to teach those of you that enrolled for mathematics. However, I am urging all of you get the link to our mathematics class, our further mathematics class, so as to be guided on mathematical principles. It is for your good, and you will never regret it. Is that okay? Anyway, having said that, let me quickly show you this. You can still choose to expand this by doing u plus at. You know, this is squared. So you multiply by itself again, u plus at. So that you have u times u, which is u squared. And then you have u times at, which is u at. Then at times u, which is under u at. That u80 plus the first u80 will give you 2u80. And then a t times a t will give you a times a, which is a squared, t times t, which is t squared. Like I said, there is a faster way using binomial expansion to get this, which is what I've done. Let us move on, please. At this point, I am going to factorize 2a from these two terms. Are you following right? So let me write it. Factorize 2a 
factorize 2a from 2uat plus a squared t squared. Then someone might be wondering, who has the knowledge of mathematics? Why can I factorize 2 from here? There is no 2 in this term. Yeah, I can factorize a because there is a here, there is a here. But there is no 2 here, I have only 2 here. So why would I factorize 2 from these terms? It is possible, this is mathematics. Now let me quickly, quickly show you something about factorization. Something that maybe you may not have known before, but if you knew it before, good enough. Still an added advantage. If you have 2x plus y, if you look at this, is there anything common to both of them? Think it's only one that is common. This whole term is times one. This one is also times one. So it's only one that is common. Two is not. X is not. Y is not. But what if I choose to factorize two? Can I actually do that? The answer is yes, I can do that. As long as I know what factorization is all about. And today I'm going to show you what factorization is about. If I say that two is common here, that I want to factorize two, I'll bring out that two. How will I know the terms that will be inside the bracket now? These two that I brought out, I'll use it to divide these two terms that I'm factorizing 2 from. So this is going to give me 2x divided by 2 plus y divided by 2. Now you notice that these two and these two we cancel out. And this will give us what? 2 bracket x plus y over 2. If you open up this bracket, you still get this. This is the principle of factorization. Like if I gave you 2x plus say 2y now, and you say that 2 is common, you bring it out. To know what should be inside the bracket, it's going to be 2x divided by the 2 you brought out, plus this 2y divided by the 2 you brought out. So this is the mathematics of factorization. This will go with this, this will go with this. This is the mathematics of what? Factorization. Whatever you are pulling out. Use it to divide where you are pulling it out from. With that, you can factorize out anything, whether that thing is there or not. All right, let us do it here and see. This will give us v squared equal to u squared. Then coming to this, plus I have factorized 2a out. What will now be in the bracket? The 2a, I will use it to divide 2uat. If you divide 2uat by 2a, you are going to get uh, ut. And then plus divide a squared t squared by 2a, you are going to get a t squared divided by 2. How did I know that I'm going to get a t squared divided by 2? Watch. a squared t squared divided by 2a. This a will cancel 1 from the top, from the numerator. You know, this a is a times a. This a squared is a times a. So 1 of it will divide this one under. So you'll be left with 1a on top, then t squared divided by 2. All right, now that I've done the factorization, I want you to watch this bracket very well. Do you agree with me that this bracket is equal to the second equation of motion, equation 2? Look at it. It's the same as this term. And this term is defining distance s for us. So what will I do? I will simply substitute for this whole bracket. In place of this bracket, I'll replace it with s. So all right, replace the bracket, replace the brackets. The brackets, the brackets, and what's the bracket? That is ut plus one half at squared. Replace it with the distance, with distance s, with distance s, which is our second equation of motion. Therefore, what we are going to get will be v squared equal to u squared plus two a. Then this whole bracket, you fix S there. And this is the third equation of motion, equation 3. Let me indicate it. Third equation of motion. Third equation of motion. Third equation of motion. And of course, we are done deriving the three equations of uniformly accelerated motion. It is now time we're going to see how we use them to solve questions. And I want to believe that you are ready, prepared for that. A body is moving with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. 
This body accelerates uniformly at a rate of 10 meter per square second until it attains a new velocity of 50 meter per second. How can you determine the distance covered by this body using the information about this body, the motion of this body? So in this video, we are going to see how to solve such problem. And of course, it's a simple one. If you look at what we've done so far in previous questions, using the equations of motion, it's all about looking at the question, getting to know the information given about motion there, and then think which equation of motion matches that information as given in the question. So let us still apply the same strategy here. In the question, we are given that the initial velocity of the body is 30. So u is equal to 30 meter per second. And then uh, the body accelerates uniformly at a rate of, that is the acceleration was given to us, 10 meter per square second. You see, another thing that can help you know, maybe values given to you sometimes, is their units. And how did I know that this is velocity? Apart from the fact that it was mentioned here, the unit is meter per second. Meter per second is the unit of velocity. 10 meter per square second. This is acceleration because the unit of acceleration is meter per square second. All right, so the knowledge of units is very important. We move on until it attains a velocity of 50 meter per second. So the new velocity, which of course will now be the final velocity, 50 meter per second. We are required to determine the distance covered S. We don't know. So I'm going to ask you now, look at this information given here. Look at these values. We know the initial velocity. We know the final velocity. We know the acceleration. We are asked to find distance. We are not given time. No information about time there. So if you are thinking of the equation of motion to select, would you go bother yourself about that equation of motion where you have time in it? That is the first equation of motion, you have time there. The second equation of motion, you have time there. You don't need to think about those because time was not given to you here. Okay, like the first equation of motion, you don't even need it. You don't need it because you are calculating distance. The first equation of motion, there is no distance there. So if you think about the second equation of motion where there is distance and the third equation of motion where there is distance, why can you not use the second equation of motion for this problem? Because the time was not given. The time was not given. So the best equation of motion to use here is the third equation of motion. Using the third equation of motion, using the third equation of motion, third equation of motion, equation of motion. We know that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, and we are looking for s, the distance. But before I move on to solving this, let me say this. You may still choose on your own to use the second equation of motion, s equal to ut plus 1 half at squared. The only thing now is that if you want to use that equation, since you don't know time, time was not given to you here, you are going to find time first. And from this question, we can get the time during this motion using the first equation of motion. Now, we know V, we know U, we know A. We can calculate T using V equal to U plus A T. Then once I get T, I can now use the second equation of motion to calculate distance directly. U T plus one half A T squared. But of course, that's going to be a long protocol, okay? I don't want us to stress our subs. Let's go directly and substitute. Our V is equal to 50. It implies that 50 squared will be equal to U is 30. 30 squared plus 2 times A. Acceleration is 10. Then times S. So let's get a calculator and see what we get. 50 squared. 50 squared should give us 2,500. Correct. 2,500 equal to 30 squared is 900. 30 squared. 900. Then plus 2 times 10 will give you 20 times s, 20s. Now we are looking for this s. This is 900 plus 20s. Mathematics tells us to collect like terms here. Alright? 
algebraic simplification. So I'm going to move this 900 to the right left hand side. That's going to be 2500 minus 900 equal to 20s. 2500 minus 900 would give us what? 1600. 1600 equal to 20s. Now divide both sides by the coefficient of the unknown. That is by 20. You have your s to be 1600 divided by 20. Therefore, the value of the distance covered by this body would be 1,600 divided by 20. And that gives us 80 meters. That's the distance covered by the body. We've successfully learned how to use the equation of motion to solve problems. In our next class, I'll be teaching you how to solve problems when dealing with motion under gravity. Since the type of motion we've been treating is that motion along a straight line horizontally. When the motion is now vertical, what do you do? You know when something moves vertically, it's under, motion, under gravity. This mark has gone up, it still fell down. The reason is because force of gravity is pulling it towards the center of the earth. So we're going to see how we can use the knowledge of equation of motion to solve problems involving gravity. That's in our next class.